Welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky Athletics podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. Welcome back, and thank you for downloading and listening to another episode of Topper Talk Podcast. As always, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Topper underscore Talk, and follow our YouTube channel at Topper Talk Podcast. Give us a subscribe over there. You know, get notified whenever we add uh, new episodes, new videos. Uh, you know, now with basketball season launching, you know, we're kind of doubling up every week. We got football and basketball uh, for the next several weeks. So, you know, we're uh, going to have a lot of fun content coming up real soon. Um, and on that same note, we are diving into a basketball season preview episode Tyler man got you with me as always you ready to dive in we've got a ton of information to cover on basketball you ready I am man it's like Christmas day you know woke up yesterday is like oh basketball season's here bull yeah it feels like we were just here um recording oh we were it was just last night but we're back again uh before we jump into the episode uh let's talk about our sponsor that is the fireman moving company uh, the Fireman Moving Company is the official moving company of WKU Athletics. Not only can they be trusted to move all the coaches in and out of Western, but they can move you anywhere nationwide. The Fireman Moving Company is owned and operated by Firemen and is founded by WKU alumni. If you are looking to move sometime soon, give them a call at 270-791-1755 and get yourself a free quote. I promise it will be the best thing you do if you are moving. Now, generally we go straight into our red towel wrap up at this point Uh, but being that we just recorded yesterday there's not any new news no new sports have been played so we're going to jump right into our basketball season preview episode which is also at the same time going to be a kind of a de facto uh, Kentucky Wesleyan recap from the game last night so you know we have had a few basketball episodes since we started this podcast in April you know, we talked about the transfer portal news when some players were starting to get signed. Um, when the schedule came out, you know, we had an interview with Steve Lutz and got to talk to him about, you know, creating and building his staff, uh, building the roster, um, and even what he went into to build his schedule. And then just a week or two ago, you know, we got to have an interview with Christian Lander and talk to him about his journey coming to Western and his expectations for this upcoming season. Um, So obviously with so many new coaches and players, we didn't really have a lot to go off of for expectations for this year. You know, there were no exhibition games. You know, the Kentucky Wesleyan game was a a, a game on our record. We're one and oh, there were two secret scrimmages. If you want to call them that air quotes, secret scrimmages. Uh, We faced SIU Edwardsville and SIU, um, we beat Edwardsville. We lost to SIU, uh, but there weren't many details about how those games went, as far as you know how the team looks, stats, etc. Then we also had Hilltopper Hysteria a couple weeks ago, but there wasn't a scrimmage this year. Uh, there was just a skills competition. There was a shooting competition, um, and now we've had our first game just last night against Kentucky Wesleyan, in which we won ninety to sixty four. So now, you know, we have a little bit of information, some, you know, we've got to see the players in literal game speed now. So the perfect time to have this uh, preview episode and and know a little bit more about where, what we're going to talk about. So we're going to cover every player on the roster uh, with so many new names. There's nine new players on this roster. Uh, we're going to talk about their playing experience and then you know what we saw against Kentucky Westland. Um, I'm going to bring Tyler in. He had the chance to see him when they had the, uh, the Barron County scrimmage a couple weeks ago. You know, we, we talked about it. some. we touched on it in the uh, red towel wrap up when that occurred, but what was your first impression of this Steve Lutz Hilltopper team during that event? Well, you know, there wasn't much that you could really glean from it. Uh, Rodney Howard, you know, he, he, he got a lot of rebounds, both offensive, defensive, a lot of putbacks. Uh, they moved the ball uh, good. It was a the clock didn't stop, so whenever fouls come up, they just kind of checked it up there, uh, or they they played out of bounds plays. But 
you know, there wasn't a lot that you could glean from it. Um, I mean, play of uh, BJ Marable, he, I think he got a rebound, drove it down the floor. Um, it was good to see the ball movement. A lot of people shooting threes, but other than that, you know, there just wasn't a whole lot, nothing like a, you know, full game that we got to see last night. Yeah. And you know, my first impression after last night's game with KWC is that this team brings the defensive intensity. Um, you know, we saw a lot of defensive effort last night at that game that we haven't seen at Western Kentucky probably since the Dennis Felton years. Um, you know, back in the early 2000s, that was my first year at Western, and we were pretty tough defensively. Um, all of our bigs were hedging on the screens out top. Uh, bigs were doubling. Um, you know, the help defense off those screens was helping and rotating. Um, yeah, you know, we just had we had a lot of active hands. We had a lot of deflections. We had a lot of steals. Um, we had several possessions where our defenders were defending all the way down to zero on the shot clock. We just didn't have that, you know, get wore down, get lazy, lose focus, and then give up a clean open shot at the last second. Um, and we even forced several shot clock violations. Uh, the team was quick to get defensive rebounds, and as soon as they did, I mean, they were advancing the ball, get the ball to the point guard, and getting the ball up the court. Um, there was a lot of motion offense, a lot of ball movement, a lot of screens, uh, very little, if any, you know, iso ball. We, you know, we've seen a lot of that in the last several years. Uh, we had some ball dominant players and that would just come down, never look to make a pass. Um, it would put up bad shots, you know, force things up, you know, and Steve coach Steve Lutz did a good job last night of setting the expectation of the defensive effort and even the offensive effort that it's going to take to be on the floor. Um, if you, if a player disrupted either one of those, he pulled you off the court, you know, quick. He was motioning for somebody to get off the bench, getting you out of the game, and he was coaching you on the way to your seat. So really nice to see. Um, and I really think, you know, setting the standard that he did last night, and I'm sure he set that in practice leading all the way up to this game, is really going to come down um, and go a long way into how this team is going to perform throughout this whole season and, you know, determine our wins and losses. I really like what I saw from an effort standpoint. Um, again, this was a division two school. It's a two a school we should have beaten. Um, but either way, effort is effort. You know, it doesn't matter who you're playing. These guys were out there hustling uh, and playing every play with just effort that we haven't seen in a long time. So, um, now let's let's talk about the players uh, and their experience, and I guess and also we'll tie in what we saw um, versus KWC. So we're just going to go down the roster. I kind of did it by position, starting with the bigs and going into the guards. So first up, we're going to start off with Rodney Howard. Uh, he's a six foot eleven, two hundred fifty pound fifth year senior who transferred here from Georgia Tech. Tyler, what can you tell me about Big Rod? All right, so he played three seasons for the Yellow Jackets. He started in forty one games in his last two seasons in Atlanta. He averaged 4.3 rebounds and 4.5 points per game in the 2022-2023 season while shooting 55% from the floor in 17 minutes uh, per game. He averaged 3.9 points and 4.4 rebounds in uh, ACC action, connecting on 50% of his shots. He logged three games of double-digit scoring in his senior year with two double-doubles, appeared in 27 contests in his junior year, averaging 6.5 points and 5.1 rebounds. Um, he also logged three double-doubles during the 2021-2022 year and got two in 2022-2023. Uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, Rodney hired big body, big big guy. I, I'm, I'm happy to see him on the, on the floor. Yeah, no, versus KWC, he played 20 minutes. Uh, he finished with eight points. He had two rebounds uh, on four and – on four of nine shooting with those eight points. Um, you know, we really were looking to dump the ball down to him a lot. You know, he had a, a very good post back to the basket game. And really one of the first thoughts I thought was, I was thinking of when I kept seeing us throw the ball down to him, I was like, man, to have this type of coaching and this offense, you know, the last five years when we had Charles Bassey, Jamarian Sharp, you know, just big guys that could have dominated in the post, but we never featured them. You know, we were always so, 
guard and and three point shot heavy. Um, so man, it, it definitely made me think of that. But you know, um, I, I definitely think there's something there. The offense is definitely going to be different this year, and we're going to look to dump it down low. Yeah, you know, that's where the easy baskets come is close to the rim. So I liked what I saw. The next player up is Babakar Fai. He's a six foot eight, two hundred five pound junior. Tyler, what you got about Bubba Carr? All right, so he transferred in from the College of Charleston where he played uh, from 21 to 23. He uh, played two seasons there, appeared in a combined 65 games for the Cougars, uh, starting in 14 of those over the two years. He became more efficient in his sophomore season, averaging 4.7 points and 4.6 boards per game in just 15 minutes. Uh, he shot 52% from the floor in 2022-2023 and 51% in his freshman year. He improved from 11 to 24 blocks between his freshman and sophomore seasons. He averaged just under an assist per game in both years. He scored a career-high 12 points with three blocks against Kent State in 2022-2023 season. He logged a double-double of 10 boards and 11 points against Richmond, uh, nearly had another at Elon with nine rebounds and 10 points. Yeah, so – when I was looking at his stats versus KWC, I was really kind of surprised. Um, you know, I saw the post game where they interviewed him and it, they told him, you know, he had a career high points and rebounds. He had 12 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, he was five of six shooting. Um, but he did that in only seven minutes of action. Think about that. Seven minutes, he put up 12 points, 10 rebounds. I mean, this man was cleaning up everything that came off the rim, uh, especially on that offensive end. He was getting those easy rebounds and put them right back up. So he's definitely going to be somebody that's crashing the boards, um, and especially on that offensive end. So you'd love to have that type of guy on your team, and you know he looks like he can be a solid contributor uh, in the rotation of the bigs. Uh, next up is B.J. Marable. He's a six foot nine, 230-pound senior. Tyler, what can you tell us about him? All right, so he uh, transferred in from Triton. Uh, he appeared in 28 contests for the Trojans, starting in 26 of those. He averaged 21.6 minutes per game, shooting 52.9% from the floor. He averaged 8.5 points and 5.9 boards per game. Had a career-high 26 points and 19 boards against Richmond uh, J. Daly College, making 10 of 11 attempts from the field and dishing out eight assists all in 27 minutes. So this boy, he, he seemed like he could be a high producer. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I wasn't expecting that. I hadn't looked that much into him. Uh, he he saw very limited minutes uh, versus KWC. He looked to be a skilled big, um, you know, somebody that looks like he could come in and give the starters a breather when needed. Um, he came in, he didn't attempt any shots, and he only had two rebounds in his eight minutes of action. Um, but he was active out there, you know, good on defense. Uh, you tell he brought some energy to the floor, so – Definitely think I can see a spot in the rotation for him, especially as a big body. Um, he'll definitely – I'm sure he'll see the floor. Uh, next up is a familiar face, uh, Tyrone Marshall Jr., a.k.a. Wu, six foot seven, 215-pound senior. Again, he's one of only four returning scholarship players from last season. Tyler, what can you tell us about Wu? All right, so <clears throat> he played in all of, of Western's 33 uh, games last season averaging 13.6 minutes with 2.7 boards and three points, averaging uh, shooting 50% from the floor, had 20 steals and 18 assists on the year, scored a uh, Division One career high, 16 points against South Carolina uh, State on November 26, as he shot 75% uh, from the field, scored points in 22 of his 33 appearances, played a season-high 24 points at UAB uh, last season on January 11th, Scoring five points and pulled down four and pulled down four boards. Had at least th three boards in thirteen games for WKU. Yeah, I think Wu is almost the epitome of the exact kind of player that Steve Lutz wants. He's a high energy player. He's he's aggressive on offense and he's very active on defense. You know, I think he's one of those players you'll never have to question what his energy or his effort is on the court. Uh, in the game against KWC, he finished with nine points, three rebounds, and two assists in 18 minutes of action. Uh, the next player up is Falu Jun. He's a six foot eleven, 205 pound redshirt junior, and again, he's another one of the four returning players. Tyler, what about Falu? 
So Falou made appearances in 30 of our 33 games last season, making his first career start against Charlotte on January 21st, averaging one rebound and 2.6 points in 6.8 minutes per game. Shot 40.6% from the field for the year with a 28 of 69 mark. Made 17 threes on the year, netting two in a single game on four different occasions. He scored 14 points while shooting five of six, including two of three from the arc against Illinois State in the Cayman Islands Classic on November 22nd, uh, playing a Division I career high 15 minutes in that game. He scored five points, including one three-pointer in his D1 debut at Eastern Kentucky, and he was also named to the Conference USA Commissioner's Honor Roll. So he's also smart. Why is shooting a three-point shot? Yeah, we know he can shoot the three. I mean, he definitely showed that last year, um, but he didn't do that in our game against KWC, and I don't know if he just doesn't have the green light. It was a different style of ball. Um, now, he only played 10 minutes versus KWC. He finished with four points on one of two shooting, and he didn't have any rebounds. Um, did notice he was wearing a large brace on that knee that he had injured uh, the year before he joined us last year. Um, it didn't appear to limit his mobility any. Um but I don't think that Falou, the player, I don't think he fits in as a you know, potential starter with the pace and just the speed that Steve Lutz appears to want to pay, play, just quick up and down the court, aggressive on defense. Uh, but again, I, I think um, just like Marable, I think he's going to be another nice reserve piece that can come in and give the starters a breather for you know between media timeouts for four to eight minutes at a time if needed. Uh, now, next up is Enoch Kalembe. He's a six foot six, two hundred five pound junior. Tyler, what about Enoch? All right, so he transferred in from Indian Hills Community College. Uh, he spent two seasons there uh, with Coach Hank. Uh, helped the program to back to back national tournament appearances. Named third team NJCAA All American in April twenty twenty three. Named. Uh, 2022-23 Indian Hills Student Athlete of the Year, played in 33 games for uh, Indian Hills Community College in 2022-2023. He averaged 12.8 points, 2.8 assists, and 6.6 boards in 25.8 minutes per game. Scored in double digits in 21 games with five contests of at least 20 points. Named to the NJCAA All-Region First Team, averaged 18.5 points per contest in national tournament games, scoring over 30 points in the national title game and earning him a spot in the National Junior College Athletic Association All-Tournament Team. He appeared in all 33 contests for the Warriors in 2021-2022. He was also named to the NJCAA All-Region Honorable Mention at, after averaging 9.8 points per game while shooting 51.9% from the floor. And he also led uh, Indian Hills Community College to a 56 and 11 record in his two seasons though so dang good to have him on team yeah you know my first impression uh at the kwc game was that he's probably one of the better athletes on this roster um he, you could just tell he's explosive he has really quick feet um he stayed in front of his man on defense he was very aggressive on offense um it just looked like he could jump out the gym and he had one of the the nicer highlight dunks of the game uh there's a picture i think wku sports or basketball put up where he's just you know in the middle just going up for a nice high flying dunk i think he's going to be the one um maybe not quite that josh anderson type mode of a player but he is athletic he's got he's a good size body six foot six listed as a guard um he's going to be a solid player so you know again really glad uh, Enoch is on this roster. I'm expecting a lot of good things from him this season. Uh, next up is Dante Allen. Uh, he's a six foot seven, 210 pound red shirt senior. And again, he's another one of the returners from the 2022 Rick Stansberry team. Tyler, what about Dante? One of two of the Kentucky boys on the team. Uh, he appeared in 26 of our 33 games last season, making starts in the final 11 contest. Um, he sat the other seven due to a eligibility issues from the University of Kentucky. Thank you, Coach Cal and the big blue losers from up north. Uh, when starting, he averaged 13.9 points and 4.8 rebounds per game and shot 41.6% from the arc with a mark of 32 makes to 77 misses in 32 minutes. 
Over the year, averaged 20.9 minutes per game with 9.3 points and 3.1 boards per game. Had 11 games of double-digit double scoring, completing nine of those in his 11 starts. Finished 11th in the league in three points made per game uh, with a mark of 1.85. He scored a WKU career high 25 points against UTEP on February 4th in his second ever start, winning the Conference USA Player of the Week by pairing that with a 22-point performance against UTSA just two days prior. Uh, he made six three-pointers at Charlotte on February 16th, playing in uh, – Playing 42 minutes, shooting 54.5% from the beyond the arc and notching a double-double with 24 points and 10 boards. Uh, he scored 16 points and netted two three-pointers in his first time playing in Diddle Arena on November 12th. Yeah, you know, Dante's um he he's a a good player, he's a solid player. Now it's funny that you know all, all that he did last year, we never may have saw him if it weren't for Luke Frampton getting injured for the season. You know, that was really kind of his door opening where he had a chance to get in the rotation because Rick likes to keep that ro – he liked to keep that rotation so short and small um, that Dante wasn't seeing much time. That happened, and all of a sudden he got on the floor and started knocking down some threes. Now, versus KWC, he played 16 minutes, um, and he was pulled a couple times uh, quickly by Coach Lutz after some defensive lapses – and some offensive uh, sputters, I guess you could call them, just not good decisions. Um, he didn't start the game last night. I don't know if that's telling of anything or if it's going to, you know, I, I would have thought he was an expected starter on this team, um, but he didn't start. Uh, he did finish the game with three points on just one of six shooting. Um, now, we know that he when he gets hot, he can get hot. I mean, you talked about several games where he had 20-plus points, you know, hitting four, five, six threes a game. Um, but in Lutz's high energy and fast paced offense and defensive sets, I think it's hard. It's hard for me to see Dante consistently being a starter um, when it's very well known that historically, even back to his time at UK and high school, he's a little bit slower afoot. Uh, he's not the greatest defender. And really, I think it's going to boil down to his effort on both ends of the floor are going to determine how much time he sees on the floor either as a starter or a reserve going forward. Now, next up is guard Don McHenry. He's a six foot two, 160 pound junior. Tyler, what can you tell us about Don? All right, so he's another uh, Indian Hills Community College transfer in. Uh, and get ready because he has uh, a lot of accolades to his, to his name. Uh, name to the NJCAA D1 first team All American for the 2022 20, 2023 season, selected to the NABC NJCAA Division I All American team as well. Played in 34 games for the Warriors, averaging 25 minutes per appearance. He, he was named to the uh, Iowa Community College Athletic Conference Player of the Year and was picked to the Region 11 All Region first team. Uh, he shot 43% from the field, averaging 15 point, <clears throat> excuse me, 15.4 points per game. He made 63 three-pointers on the year, shooting 30, 36% from beyond the arc. Uh, he added 2.8 assists and 3.1 rebounds per contest, scored in double digits 24 times in the season, including a season-high 35 points in a win over Highland College from Illinois. He scored 26 points in the opening round of uh, round win of the national tournament between January 14th, 2023, and February 22nd, 2023. Scored in double figures in each of the team's 11 contests, averaging 21.2 points per game. Whew. Yeah, that's a whole lot. It reminds me of uh, <laughs> of uh, our boy Malachi a few weeks ago against Louisiana Tech when he had that just flurry of awards after that big game. Uh, what I can tell you about Don McHenry is that that boy is lightning quick. Uh, you know, once he got the ball in his hands after we secured a rebound, um, that boy was up the court in a hurry. Um, and I liked it because it doesn't give the defense a chance to get set. Um, he had really good handles. Uh, a couple times he went coast to coast and just got layups. Um, and he was very active on defense. Uh, he forced several turnovers. Just He always had his hand in the cookie jar. Um, he was active uh, with a lot of rebounds. You know, he was just crashing the board a lot, even as a six-foot-two-three guy. 
Um, he finished the game with eight points on four of seven shooting. He had three rebounds and four assists in 21 minutes of action. Um, now, I'm not sure if he's going to be the starter whenever uh, Jalen Jackson, that we'll talk about in a minute, returns from injury. Um, but if if he's not a starter, and I was super impressed by what I saw against KWC, then I'm really excited to see what Jalen Jackson may bring to the floor because um, Don McHenry – is a really good player and the effort and the energy that he brings. And he's already familiar with this coaching staff. Uh, whether he starts or not, he's going to see plenty of time and plenty of minutes on the floor uh, just because how good he is and how much effort he puts out there. Next up is Jalen Jackson. He's a five foot 11, 175 pound guard. Uh, he's a fifth year senior. Tyler, what can you tell us about Jalen? So Jalen came to us from Texas A&M Corpus Christi following Coach Lutz, where he played uh, the 2021 through 2023 seasons. He was named the Southland Tournament MVP in 2023 after averaging 15 points, four rebounds, and four assists in the conference tournament, logging a career-high 37 minutes in the championship game while scoring 17 points against Northwestern State. Named to the all tournament team and all academic first team in his senior season. Uh, increased his scoring uh, between junior and senior years, going from 6.6 .6 points to 7.4 points. <clears throat> also improved shooting from 39.7% to 41.4% uh, from the floor. Scored a career high 22 points against Southeast Missouri State, helping the Islanders to their first ever NCAA parents win in program history, which was against. Bama, I believe. Go Jalen Jackson. Yeah, he wanted Bama. We want Bama. Now, Jalen was not dressed uh, and did not play versus KWC. Um, it was revealed uh, after the game by Coach Lutz in the postgame conference um, that he had surgery on his foot um, you know, several weeks ago and that he was likely three to five more weeks out from being cleared to return. Um so we'll have to wait. And going by what I saw from Don McHenry, I wouldn't be in any rush to get him back on the court. Let him heal. You know, it's his last year of basketball. I'm sure he wants to get back on the court, but he also needs to think about his future, his pro aspirations, whether it be NBA or overseas or wherever. Um, come back when he's ready. You know, if he's going to be the projected starter, I'm excited for that. I can't wait for him to be back. You know, if he's starter caliber material and, if, and he knows Lutz and he knows his system and his expectations. So, you know, once he's back and ready, he's re he's going to be plug and play. So that, that's going to be a solid addition uh, once he's ready to come back. Next up is Christian Lander. He's a six foot three, hundred ninety five pound senior, and he's the third uh, returning player that we're going to talk about here uh, from last year's two thousand twenty two team. Tyler, what can you tell us about Christian? All right, so he appeared in all of our games last season, starting in two of those contests at home, averaging 11.4 minutes with 3.2 points and 1.2 rebounds per game. He added 21 assists on the season while shooting 30.7% from the floor. He netted 25 threes throughout the year, shooting 38.5% from, uh, from the arc, scored in double figures twice, 13 points against Kentucky State, and 12 points against uh, La Tech on uh, February 23rd, played a career-high 24 minutes against FIU in his first career start on January 14th. He made three, uh, he made four three-pointers against La Tech and on February 23rd and was named to the Conference USA Commissioner's Honor Row. Yeah, Christian played 21 minutes last night. He finished with 10 points on three of seven shooting, including two of five from three. He also had five rebounds and three assists. So really an, just overall good and productive game for a Christian. Um, and I really think this motion and this movement, a lot of screens, a lot, just a lot of movement, not a lot of isolation ball, you know, like we had with Rick Stansberry. I really think it could be beneficial to the type of player that he is because in, in the Rick Stansberry offense, you basically had to create your own shot. You know, he was gunning out there just, on his own isolation, jack it up whenever he felt like he was open enough. And this, you know, the Steve Lutz offense, a lot of movement, a lot of screens, et cetera. If he gets the ball, it's like he's going to be catch and shoot while he's open, get in a rhythm and, and go up and shoot the ball. So I really think that's going to be beneficial for just the type of player he is. Uh, we know how good he is on defense. He was very solid man-to-man -man defender last year. You know, we talked about that 
uh, in his interview last week. Um, and I really think he's going to be a solid rotation piece and part of the depth for the guard position. I don't know if he'll be a starter or not. I think we have a lot of good and, and serviceable guards. Uh, we're really deep at that position. But I know this former five-star guard feel like he has a lot to prove this season uh, as he stayed to us last week. So we're ready for him to prove that when he gets that opportunity on the floor. Now, next up is Keegan Moore. He's a six foot five, 210 pound freshman from Owen County High School. Tyler, what can you tell us about Keegan? All right. So he was named to the Kentucky All Star team as a junior and senior, uh, seven uh, time first team academic All State member, uh, four time all eighth region selection, scored over 3,300 points in his high school career, in addition to uh, having over 1,100 rebounds, only the eighth player in the state's history to have at least 3,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. So that's freaking awesome. Uh, led the state in career-made free throws with 848. He averaged 31.7 points per game in his senior year, the third most in the state. So good to have a talented Kentucky boy on the uh, roster. Yeah, Tegan came in against Kentucky Wesleyan and had 12 points. And all of those were in the second half of action, uh, all of his points. He played 17 minutes total. He was three of five shooting, including two of four from three. Um, I was really impressed by Tegan. Um, he had a really – he has a really just solid college-ready body. He's not a typical freshman that comes in, looks like he needs to put on weight and work out more. I'm sure he'll do that naturally, you know, just as he – it grows from an 18 year old up to into his twenties during his time here, but he comes in with a college ready body. You can plug and play and he's going to be comfortable and be able to hold his own. Uh, his three point shot looked really pure. He knocked down a couple there in the second half, got to feeling good. Um, that third one that he chucked up was kind of a heat check. Again, it was a good shot in my opinion, <laughs> but in the post game, uh, coach Lutz did refer to that as a, a heat check and maybe a bad shot. Maybe it wasn't in the flow of, of the offense of what he had drawn up. So, you know, like you said, he did have a really solid senior year in high school. Um, he had a really great summer with the Kentucky high school all-stars. Um, and he's proven that he was one of the better players in the state and he, he can be a contributing role player from day one. Um, his defensive effort was top notch. Uh, you know, Tegan's defensive effort was top notch. Uh, I, re I have really high hopes for how he could be playing by the end of this season. And then obviously for, you know, the rest of his years to come here at Western Kentucky. The next up player is Terry on Murdix. He's a six foot, 170 pound, 170 pound graduate transfer. Tyler, what can you tell us about Terry? All right. So here's another long list. Uh, Transferred in from Texas A&M Corpus Christi, where he played from 21 to 23. He was named to the uh, South, uh, the SLC Defensive Player of the Year in 2023, selected to all-conference first team, all-defensive team, and NABC all-district first team in 2023. In 2022, he was the South Southland Conference Tournament MVP. Uh, in 2022, he was the – all tournament team and all defensive team for the Southland Conference led the league in assist, assist to turnover ratio, and steals in the 2022-2023 season, ranking 14th in the nation in steals per game with a mark of 2.3 and 23rd in assists per game with a mark of 5.4. He became the first player in Texas A&M Texas Corpus Christi program history to have 15 plus points and 15 plus assists in a game he averaged 13.4 points per game during during his senior season increasing that average to 15.7 in league action he shot 83.6 percent from the charity stripe and 48.9 percent from the floor he logged 23 double figure scoring games in uh, 2022 to 2023 including four 20 plus point performances he averaged 12.7 points and 6.3 assists per game in the 2022 Southland Conference Tournament, leading the Islanders to a tournament title and earning MVP status. Led the league in assists per game at 3.38, while averaging 9.8 points per game on the year and 12.2 points per game in conference play. He logged 17 double-figure scoring games with three contests of 20 or more points. Jeez, Lordies. 
yeah, you better get a longer piece of paper because that boy had some accolades. Uh, now, Terion, he was our last signee. He filled out this uh, signing class for Steve Lutz's first year, um, but he's another player that was not suited up or playing in this game. Uh, he had an injury uh, to his knee late in the season last year, and the plan is that we're going to hold him out for this entire year. He's going to use a medical red shirt um, and join us next year. Um, now, he is a former Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Year, like you stated. And, I, you know, he really should be a plug-and-play solid addition next year. He can't, and what I've went back and looked at some video, some tape on him while they were still playing last year before he got injured, um, he he really gave me that Mike Wells type of vibe. If, if you remember Mike Wells from the early 2000s, he was a, a guard – that was also one Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Year as a guard, which is kind of a rare feat. Usually that's a big man or somebody blocking a lot of shots. But as a guard, you know, you're getting a lot of steals, obviously playing solid defense. So um, I don't want to say it's rare air, but it's not something you see every day. So I'm excited to see him when he's healthy and ready to get on the floor. Looks like that'll be next year before that happens, though. Uh, next up is going to be Brandon Newman. He's a six foot five, hundred and ninety five pound redshirt senior. Tyler, what can you tell us about Mr. Newman? All right, so he transferred to us from Purdue, where he played from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty three. He played three seasons of basketball in four years for the Boilermakers. Appeared in all thirty five games for Purdue in twenty twenty two twenty twenty three season. Starting in the final six of the season, he averaged six points, three point one. 3.1 rebounds and 1.1 assists per game while netting 35 three-pointers across the year. Scored in double figures six times, including 19-point game with six boards, five assists, and three steals in a home win over Illinois. Uh, had 11 games of five or more rebounds, appeared in 25 games with one start in 2021-2022, averaged 4.6 points, 1.9 rebounds, and 0.6 assists per game, scoring in double figures in four of Purdue's First seven games of the season appeared in 28 games uh, his freshman year, starting in 23 of those, averaged eight points, 2.5 rebounds, and 1.3 assists in his debut campaign, shooting 39.8% from the floor and 37.9% from the three. Uh, And he also set out the uh, 2019-2020 season as a redshirt. So, you know he's he, he's gotten better as the season ha- uh, the years have progressed, and I'm excited to see what he brings to WKU. Yeah, and uh, again, and it is another player that's familiar with Steve Lutz when Steve was an assistant there at Purdue. Uh, now Brandon played 18 minutes versus KWC. He finished the game with 14 points, which was our leading score in the game. Uh, he was four of seven on shooting, including one of three from three. He also had five rebounds. Uh, Newman is really a player that I would expect to be one of our offensive leaders on a game-by-game basis, um, probably lead us in scoring a lot of games. Uh, he's very athletic. You know, I said Kalembe was probably our most athletic guy. I think Brandon's probably right there behind him. You know, Super athletic, really smooth, silky-looking player. Had a good shot. Um, you know, just it, it looked easy for him. Uh, and even Coach Lutz in the postgame mentioned that Brandon was probably going to have a bigger role in this offense moving forward because he just knows how to score the ball. Um, and I think he's really a very solid fifth year kind of a leader to this team that has a lot of experience playing there at Purdue. That's a very good program playing for Steve Lutz at the time. So I think he's going to be a solid addition this year and, and somebody that could really determine, you know, how far we go by how fast this team gels, you know, knowing what the expectations uh, of the new coach are now. When we set up this episode, we at first we weren't going to talk about the walk-ons. You know, I was just going to talk about the scholarship players. But if if you watched the game or read any notes about it last night, um, we were kind of forced into talking about at least one of them, uh, and that's going to be freshman Jack Edlin. He is a five foot ten, one hundred seventy pound freshman. Tyler, what can you tell us about Jack? Well, one thing I can say about him, he got that dog in him. Right. I mean, this boy, I, I remember watching him at the scrimmage. He was uh, out there shooting threes. Uh, and last night when I was listening to the, ra- the the game on the radio, you know, uh, Randy and I was talking about his defensive play. Uh, well, he, he 
as a freshman, he played his high school ball at Mail High School out of Louisville, uh, where he led his team to a sweet 16 appearance in his senior year, uh, led the Bulldogs in scoring also his senior year with 17.4 points per game. Um, he p- became a member of the Thousand Point Club his uh, senior year and made 153 pointers for the Bulldogs over uh, two years where he played for male his junior senior season um, and he made 153 pointers for them. So definitely a, a happy surprise. Uh, it's good to see him out there. Yeah, we were were forced into talking about him because he played the most minutes of, of any of our players last night. He played 23 minutes last night. Now, he finished with zero points, but he only took one shot. So, you know, he had one rebound. He had three assists. He was really that prototypical point guard that's looking to pass first. You know, he was a solid player. Um, and his stat line, when I just read to you, zero points, oh, of one, one rebound, three assists. That stat line's not going to jump out at you and go, man, what a player. But his effort and his skill, what he brought to the, the game last night, is not, you know, you can't measure his effort. Um, he was making smart decisions with the ball. He ran the offense very well. Um, and defensively, he was very active. He's quick. He kept his player in front of him. Um, you know, walk on or not, you know, that's the type of player that you want on your team. And like you said, he's a, he, he's got that dog in him. He's, he's a grinder. Um, and he's somebody that I think, you know, it's going to be hard to keep him off the court just because his effort is, you know, right up on par with what, you know, coach Lutz is going to expect. Um, lastly, the last two players that we're going to talk about is going to be, um, the other two walk-ons we had appearances by, that's Jalen Dorsey and Tyler Oden. Tyler, what can you tell us about Jalen and Fluff? All right, so I'm going to talk about Jalen first. Uh, he appeared in three games for the Hilltoppers uh, last season where he averaged 6.6 uh, 6 minutes per game. Uh, played his first game as a Hilltopper uh, uniform in Diddle Arena against Kentucky State on November 12th. Served as a representative for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Uh, and as a freshman, he uh, he was actually a team manager. So talking about a success story and and moving up, uh, but he played his high school ball at Berea Community High School, where he is also a member of the Thousand Point Club. Now moving down to Tyler Fluff Odin, uh, he appeared in three games for the Hilltoppers, averaged. 0.6 minutes per game as well, and also served as a representative on the Student Athlete Advisor Committee and is the male chair of the SAAC, and he is also named to the Conference USA Commissioner's Honor Roll. So that's that's Jaden and Tyler for you. Yeah, you know, they got um, – Dorsey only played two minutes. He finished with two points in the game. Um, I think he made some free throws and then fluff came in. He only played one minute. You know, I would expect that both of those guys, like you said, they appeared in three games last year. Um, I would expect them to see very little playing time. I mean, they're walk-ons. That's kind of what you expect. You know, if, if we're blowing somebody out, you know, if we're up 25, 30 plus with under two, three minutes to go, they might get in. Uh, or if we're getting blown out by that much, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, you know, I think, Overall, though, um, we're just not going to see a lot of them just because of the really the depth of the other talent that we have on the roster, uh, even though it does seem like Coach Lutz is open to playing a bigger rotation, uh, unlike the you know six, seven, maybe eight players that Rick would play. Um, but overall, the team had a solid 90 to 64 victory over KWC, uh, which had previously beaten Louisville in their prior game. WKU ended up the game. Yes, L's down. Uh, WKU ended the game shooting 32 of 57 from the floor, which was good for 56.1%. And we were 6 of 20 from 3, which is good for 30%. Uh, We finished with 36 rebounds compared to only 29 for KWC. And we had 15 assists on those 32 made baskets. Uh, More impressive than our efficiency on offense and our sharing of the ball was our tenacity on defense. Uh, the effort alone on that end of the floor should go a long way to towards keeping us in ball games. 
And obviously now a big test awaits us in our next game. So let's talk about our schedule. And first we're going to talk about the non-conference schedule. Um, we've already played one game of that non-conference schedule. We're 1-0 and after this victory versus KWC. Um, we play at Wichita State on Thursday. They finished 17 of fi- 17 and 15 last season and won their first game of this season, 76 to 59 versus Lipscomb. Winning on the road is tough. Um, and Wichita State has been historically good for most of the last decade. Uh, and they've got a lot of resources for the basketball program. So that's going to be a tough road trip. And then we play at Murray State on November 14th. Nice to have them back on the schedule. Just a long time uh, program rival of ours. They finished the season 17 and 15 last year, uh, including 11 and 9 in the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, they won their first game of this season, 91 to 58 versus Midway College. Then we're back at home to host Kentucky State on 11 18. They finished 15 and 13 last season. After that, we go to the Northern Classic from November 24th to 26th. Uh, the other teams in that tournament are Bowling Green State, Lipscomb, Wolford, UNC Asheville, and Canisius. Um, Then we have Campbellsville and EKU at home on 11-29 and 12-3. Campbellsville went 12-18 and last year, while EKU went 23-14. and Then we're on the road to Buffalo on December 9th and at Wright State on December 12th. Buffalo finished the season 15-17 and last year and Wright State went 18-15 and 15 last year. And then we have Austin P uh, coming to Diddle Arena on December 16th. They went 9-22 and 22 last year. Then we go all the way to Cal Baptist in Riverside, California on December 19th. Um, last year they were 17-16, and 16. and then we close out play versus Abilene Christian on December 30th, and they went 13 and 17 last year. But if you were keeping up with the opening day of college basketball yesterday, they had a big upset victory over Oklahoma State at Oklahoma State. Um, And just on paper right now, it looks like that could be the toughest game of our non-conference schedule. So Tyler, I guess looking at all those matchups, um, you know, how does the non-conference schedule look to you? How does it stack up? Um, and, and what's your record prediction? How many of those 14 games do you think we can win? Well, I know a lot of people was down on the uh, non-con, you know, whenever it first came out. Because we're used to playing P5 schools, you know, either uh, Wisconsin, Arkansas. Uh, you know, last year when we played Louisville and it was like their first victory of the season, which sucked uh, major. But – um no, I mean I'm I'm kind of happy. Yeah, well, I'm content with it. We do play historic rivals like uh, Murray State, EKU, still uh, Wichita State. That should be a great game to watch. Um, and in that Northern Classic up there, I believe it's in Canada. Uh, you know, Woodford, they're uh, they're typically. I know they've been in the NCAA tournament in the past. Um, Bowling Green State. Um, you know, we, we play Campbellsville, Buffalo. I remember that that game a few years ago where I think we split with them for like two two different years. We lost one one one. Um, Wright State. You know they've they've been in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Cal Baptist, I believe that right there. That that's going to be the real test. Uh, Cal <laughs> Cal Baptist. Um, and then finished it with Abilene Christian. Um, I like to say we go fourteen and zero um, with this with this non con, but I mean I could I think our basement um, could really be uh, twelve and two, but I could definitely see us going uh, fourteen and zero. Um, we just got to come prepared every night and 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 definitely be ready to to battle because you know nobody's going going to take it easy on us. Nobody's going to be like, oh, tops, you know, that's our first year head coach or first uh, first year with their new head coach. Uh, you know, historically, we are a – we are a historically known team. I mean, uh, Western has great basketball history. And, 
And no, uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think our basement is going to be twelve and two. Yeah, I'm pretty much right there with you. I see kind of eleven and eleven and three being as as bad as we would do. I just think we have a lot of talent on this roster, and I think we have a good mix of. I don't want to say teams that aren't very good, but teams that didn't win a lot of games last year. How about that? I'm sure um, that all of those teams are going to be improved. You know, that's the goal, recruiting and transfer portal, et cetera. Um, but I'd like to think we're still going to be favored in most of our games that we have. But we do play on the road. Um, you know, I'm penciling in wins in that Northern Classic. That's three W's right there. Uh, November 24th through 26th, I believe, was the dates on that. So I just put WWW, even though I don't know who we're playing. Um, but I definitely can see us going, you know, 11 and 3 at worst. 14 and 0 would be great. Um, but we've got a couple, couple tough games Wichita State and then Abilene Christian. And just winning on the road is always hard. So, you know, if we can pull that off by some miracle, you know, even going 11 3 or 12 and 2, like you predicted, both of those would. Any of those would be really good, in my opinion, especially year one of, you know, new coach Steve Lutz and a lot of new players. I think that'd be a solid non-conference uh, way to start the season. And then we open Conference USA play on January 6th with a game at home versus preseason Conference USA favorite Liberty. They went 27-9 and nine last year in the A-Sun Conference. Um, then we're on the road to Sam Houston on January 10th. They went 26 and eight last year. Then we have Jacksonville state and the fighting Ray Harpers coming to Diddle arena on January 13th. They were 13 and 18 last year. Um, and in my opinion, that's a must win game. Don't deliver any diet Cokes to Diddle arena that day, water only or regular Coke, bring your own diet Coke, Ray. Um, you're going home with the L sorry, buddy. Uh, then we're on the road to New Mexico State to uh, face Jordan Rawls on Jordan on January 18th, and then we play at UTEP on January 20th. Uh, New Mexico State went nine and 15 last year, um, and they canceled their season in early February. Um, you know, if you're keeping up with it, there was just some crazy stuff with their players and the coach uh, off the court. Hopefully, they've cleared all that up, cleaned all those bad eggs uh, out of the program and get back on track this year. And then UTEP went 14 and 18 last season. And then we have a three game homestand um, with FIU on January 25th, Sam Houston state on February 1st. And then our beloved rival MTSU on February 3rd, uh, FIU was 14 and 18 last season. MTSU was 19 and 14 last season. And this year MTSU has been tabbed as the preseason number two team in Conference USA, uh, just behind Liberty and right ahead of us uh, at number three. Then we go to Louisiana Tech on February 7th, uh, which is always a tough place to win uh, historically for us. And then we play at Jacksonville State. We go to the Fighting Ray Harpers on February 10th, where we get to take them another L. Uh, Louisiana Tech was 15 and 18 last year but they do have the preseason conference player of the year in Isaiah Crawford uh, returning on their squad this year. And we should remember him. He's given us fits the last couple of years. You'll remember him. He wears those goggles. He's hard to miss and forget. Um, then we're at home versus UTEP on February 15th and New Mexico state on February 17th. We'll welcome Jordan Rawls uh, back into Ditto again, send him home with a nice warm, comfy L um, and then we go to Murfreesboro, the glass house, MTSU for the 100 miles of hate on February 24th. And then we have Louisiana Tech at home on February 28th. And then we finish the season on the road with FIU on March 2nd and at Liberty on March 9th. And then the Conference USA Championship Tournament is going to be held in Huntsville, Alabama this year. Those dates on that are March 12th through March 16th. So Tyler, you know, how does this new look conference USA schedule look to you? Um, is there anything that stands out and, you know, what are your thoughts on that conference USA tournament being in Huntsville, Alabama now really close drive for us 
and give us your record prediction for conference play, those 16 games. So uh, <laughs> I guess one thing that, that stuck out to me was, you know, Sam Houston. I granted um, they did go 26-8 and eight last year. I mean, that, that kind of surprises me. Uh, I like that we start the season – or conference schedule with Liberty. We end it with them. Uh, and as always, screw MTSU. Uh, we still have the overall record of that. Uh, that, that, that overall record is an ass whipping. Um, and I hope we can add some, some W's to that. Um, I, I get, I am happy that the, uh, conference tournament is in, uh, Huntsville, Alabama got out of Texas where, I mean, nobody uh, could go there or nobody would, I guess nobody would go there. A few people made the journey, but it's just so out of, uh, out of the way for everybody. Uh, you know, I remember when it was in Birmingham, of course, UAB, that was in their backyard. They always had a big home, home uh, court advantage to that. Um, a lot of tech, they always seem like they have just, you know, they they had that. Uh, oh, who's that big boy that that was that was in the that's in the league now? Kenneth Lofton. Yeah, screw him. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like we're probably going to. I want to say we're going we're going to whip uh, Liberty. You know the LU, but I, I can see us splitting with them uh, definitely. Uh, MTSU. Always, always going to beat them in, in my mind. Um, FIU, I feel like that's going to be some easy victories. Uh, Jacksonville State, Ray Harper, you know, he, he knows what to expect whenever he comes into Diddle. Um, the red nose and all. Uh, and then uh, Jordan Rawls, he uh, he played like Dookie against, against Kentucky. You know, he only had three points. So, um, I feel like – I feel like New Mexico State, I think they have a whole new team. All their old players transferred out. So, at least we have some continuity. I feel like that's going to be two easy wins. Um, see, that that, that La Tech at La Tech kind of worries me. So, I said we're going to split with Liberty. So, that's one, two. I feel like we're probably going to beat Sam Houston, New Mexico. Uh, FIU, they 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 whipped us down there time uh, to the last few seasons whenever Stansbury was here, I believe. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, sixteen games. I could see us going sixteen. Thirteen, three, fourteen, two. That's 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 my prediction. Uh, ceiling or uh, basement will probably be eleven and five. Um, I feel like we may we may have a few slip up games. I don't feel like we're going to have many because of what Lutz expects. You know, he does expect tough defense. You know, smart plays. I feel like by the time we get to conference time, ter- conference time, that's going to be pretty much ingrained in these players' heads. Um, so yeah, basement eleven and five. Uh, I think that's the worst we're probably going to do. So that would uh, put you know. Um, but no, I, I'm I'm glad that the Conference USA tournament is out of Texas. That was a dumb decision. Um, hopefully, we don't have that stupid. Uh, uh, the curtain. The curtain. Yes, that that damn curtain. Uh, sorry for the Twitter account, whoever the CUSA curtain account is. I don't like, I don't, I didn't like it. It just made the tournament seem cheap. Um, but no, yeah. Uh, I mean, this, this, the the new look conference, I mean, I know some people wish we got out of it, but I mean, seemed like it could be a pretty good conference, man, you know? Yeah, so I'm I'm adding up your record. You thought we'd go, you said 14 0 or 12 and 2. So I'm going with your 12 and 2 in non con. Then you said 13 and 3 or 11 and 5. So I'm going with 13 and 3. 25 and 5 is your overall 
uh, record out of our 30 games heading into the conference uh, tournament there in Huntsville. So that's pretty. That's a pretty good season. I'd say that would be a successful year one for Coach Lutz. Um, now I said 11 and three in non-con. I'm going with 11 and five in conference play. I just think there's bound to be some stumbles. I mean, they happen to every team every year. Winning on the road is hard. Um, we've got a couple of good teams. I think Liberty um, is going to be really solid across all sports. We've talked about that with football. Um, they just won the women's soccer conference championship. They're going to be competitive across the board. Um, MTSU, you know, looked like they started to turn the corner last year. Um, with their new newer coach, I think, going into his fourth or fifth year now, Nick McDevitt. So, you know, I think there's some slip-ups, some stumbles in there. Go 11-5, and five, that would be a 22-8 and eight record on the season. Still a good year, um, especially in year one with so many new faces. Um, and then heading into the conference tournament, obviously that being in Huntsville, Alabama, is just going to be a huge lift to – the WKU fan base and support that it can drive down there. And whether you make a day trip of it or a weekend trip of it, whatever it is, um, you know, I think we're going to see a lot more red there than we ever did um, over at the star in Frisco, you know, between the curtains, so to speak. So I, you know, I'm really excited for that. I know it, it's not a, I guess a marquee location, you know, but it's, it's still close. It's travelable. I think, you know, us, you know, MTSU, um, I'm sure Liberty will have a good crowd just because they seem to travel well. So um, I definitely think we'll have somewhat of uh, an advantage there just from a traveling standpoint. So, but like you said, overall, I think conference USA stacks up a little bit better than people want to give it credit for. You know, I think, uh, Sam Houston is going to be good. Liberty is going to be good. Middle Tennessee is getting better. Um, you know, I think we've got all the pieces and tools, coaches and players now to just continuously get better, you know, as this season goes on. You know, the the standard and the expectation was set and has been set, you know, I'm sure through practices this summer into fall. Uh, but game one, you definitely saw – you know, there's a line in the sand that Lutz expects with defensive and offensive effort. And if you don't reach that line or you cross it in a bad way, you're coming off the court. And I think that's going to pay dividends this season and make players know that they have to try, they have to hustle, they have to be giving it their all every play, making smart decisions, and just being in the proper place, or you're going to come off and we're going to put somebody out there that can. You know, whether it's uh, one of our you know backup guards, forward, senior uh, centers, whoever, or if it's a walk-on, Jack Edlin, you know, he proved he can play. You know, his effort is going to find him onto the court if you're not pulling your weight and doing what you're supposed to do. But I'm really excited for basketball season. Um, I can't wait to be in Diddle. You know, had a pretty good crowd versus KWC. I didn't see an announced number there. Um, there weren't as many students as I would have liked to have seen. I would have loved to have seen more students show up and be loud. Um, but if I had to guess, there was probably, you know, 4,500 people, 46, 47, 4,800 people there, which is a pretty decent crowd, um, especially for a Monday night uh, late game, you know, second half of the doubleheader with the women playing before them. So we got to see, you know, come out and see uh, Steve Lutz's debut. Uh, we got to see just a really exciting, fast pace, high defensive energy, um, and a team that is just going to run, and I think they're going to score a lot. And we had we had a couple offensive lapses in the first half where we didn't score. Um, you know, we missed some shots that, you know, hopefully later in the season are going to be falling more consistently, and we still had a pretty good game. Um, so I'm really optimistic about how this season and how, you know, Coach Lutz has built this team and, you know, and all the assistant coaches, what they're going to get out of their players. I think we're going to have a really good team a really good season and hopefully obviously you know go and win a conference tournament and uh play ourselves into the ncaa tournament year one of of coach lutz that's my hope that's my expectation um you know i just don't want to get to the the conference tournament i want to win the dang thing now i want to get to the ncaa tournament and make some noise there it's been too long it's been over over 10 years now um and that's just not what we're used to that's not what we're about 
and Steve Lutz appears to be after game one. Um, he can be the man to get us back to where we want to go. So I, I'm ready for it. Tyler, go ahead, hit us with your final thoughts and get us the heck out of here. You know, uh, I had to listen to the game. I miss uh, quite a bit of the second half, but I did li- get to listen to the whole first half of the game last night. And uh, that's one thing that Hal and Randy was uh, was really excited about was the defensive pressure that that uh, Western was applying. Uh, Hal even said that uh, Tegan Moore reminds him uh, of Justin Johnson in his uh, like his body frame and uh, how how tough he can be. Uh, re- real excited about that. Um, but no, I, I said it whenever Lutz got hired. I mean, th- he seemed very very serious. Um, you know, and he's been to the NCAA tournament twice in the past, what, two years? He took Texas A&M, Corpus Christi there. Uh, so, you know, getting there to him, you know, is just something he's used to. And I'm glad that we hired him um, to bring that pedigree into Western because you're right, it's been far too long. You know, I got tired of going to the conference tournament, getting to the championship and then a layup, not going in or, we miss free throws, and it cost us going to the NCAA tournament. Um, that's one thing that we we uh, rooting and roaring for at the beginning of every basketball season, and hopefully this coach can get, and team can get us there, take us back to the promised land, uh, and then, like you said, make some noise in in the in the in the big dance. But um, I mean, this this is. I, I fucking love basketball season, man. It's a great time to be alive. Great time to be inside Diddle whenever that place is ripping and roaring. Um, I remember they tagged as as the Diddle Magic or something a few years ago. It's just a great place to be. Loud. Can play havoc on the opposing team. So, everybody, get your ticket. Get your season tickets. Let's fill that place up to the Raptors and let's make some noise. And with that, I will say, Moff, who has it better than us? Nobody, buddy, you know. Go Tops. Go Tops, guys. Later. See you.